Um, I will talk about base partitioning problems. Uh, Pascal gave earlier a talk about uh, about partitioning the edge set of a graph into spanning trees, and this project is a continuation of that project. So let me shortly re recall what was the original problem. So we have a graph was possibly infinite, and we have a cardinal lambda. And a lambda covering of G is uh, lambda many uh, spanning trees of G such that they together cover all the edges. A lambda packing of G is uh, lambda many spanning trees which are pairwise edge disjoint. And uh, lambda partitioning of G is lambda many spanning trees such that the edge sets of the spanning trees form a partition of the edge sets of the graph. And we consider the following problem. Is it true that if we have a lambda covering and also a lambda packing, then we necessarily have a lambda partitioning as well? So if the graph is finite, then the answer is yes, and it's uh, straightforward because if we take if we take a packing and it's a lambda packing and it is not a covering, then then it means that the graph must have more edges than lambda times the size of the vertex set minus one because this lambda many pairwise edge disjoint uh, spanning tree covered uh, that many edges and if it does not cover all of them then there are more edges but if there are more edges then we have no chance to cover all the edges with lambda many spanning trees so in finite case the problem is trivial and it's getting interesting in the infinite case uh, First, we managed to prove the special case when lambda is an infinite cardinal by using some combinatorial set theoretic methods. And this is the theorem that Pascal uh, proved uh, in his talk a few weeks earlier. So if lambda is finite, then we know that existence of a lambda covering and the existence of a lambda packing imply the existence of a lambda partitioning. And uh, the case of finite lambda, but still infinite graph, remained open, so we continued to think about it. And eventually we managed to answer positively also at this case when, when lambda is finite. And the trick was that the, uh, instead of considering graphs directly, the proof is more natural and the ideas are coming in a more natural way if we think about infinite matroids instead, instead of infinite graphs. <coughs> okay, uh, let me um, talk about a little bit about infinite graphs. Uh, let me start with some basic examples. If we have uh, a vector space which is we have an infinite vector space, then with the linear independence, it is an infinite matroid. If we have an infinite graph, then the subset of the subsets of the edge sets, which are acyclic, so they form a forest, they are the independent sets of, of uh, a matroid. And we have, of course, if we have an arbitrary large ground set, and we just take those subsets which has at most n elements for some natural number n, then it is also a matroid. And, uh, yep. So, in the nature of the matroid, the branch is fine. Does it just mean the ground set is infinite? Not necessarily. So, in the second example, uh, you can have infinite as well. And... Uh, and these matroids have a common property, namely, if there is an infinite set of edges and every finite subset of this infinite set is infinite in the matroid, then the whole set is also 
uh, is, is independent in the Metroid, then the whole set is also independent. And Metroids with this property called finitary Metroids. And uh, in the early days, only this kind of Metroids were known, these kind of infinite Metroids were known. So formally, we can give an axiomatization of this kind of matroids. We simply take the axiomatization of usual axiomatization of finite matroids. So we demand that the empty set is independent. The family of independent sets is downward closed. And whenever we have two independent sets, which are finite, and one of them is bigger than the other, then the bigger can give some element to the smaller by in the sense that the smaller will be still independent together. And we have a new axiom which states exactly that if we have an infinite set, then the independence of all of its finite subsets imply the independence of the whole set. So what is the, this is, this axiom system, so the examples that I uh, showed, uh, satisfy this, these axioms, but it's still not a right generalization of the finite matroid concept to infinite because, because there is no duality. So if you take a matroid like this and we formally we construct the subsets of the edge set which are avoiding a base, then uh, it's not, the resulting system not necessarily satisfy these axioms. <sighs> so, uh, Rado asked in the 60s that if there is some natural infinite matroid notion for which we have duality and minors as well. And there were several attempts to solve, to find the right notion. And Higgs find it, he called it B matroids, but he couldn't give, so he had a definition, a description for these structures, but uh, he could, couldn't give some elegant short axiom system for these objects, and that's why it was not very convenient to work with them. Uh, Oxley showed a decade later that if we want duality and uh, minus and uh, axioms from the finite matroids, then really this B matroids of Higgs is the, the largest class that we can have. <clears throat> so after that, there was a long break in about infinite matroids. And uh, after that, uh, Brun, Diesel, Krizel, uh, Pedaving, and, and Wollen uh, found a relatively short and simple axiom system which describes exactly the B matroids defined by Higgs. And they actually gave a cryptomorphic set of cryptomorphic axioms. So as we no, in the finite case, we have circuit axioms, rank, rank axioms, base axioms, and so on. They, uh, they did the same in the infinite case as well. So let me tell the, the axioms. So we have a ground set E. We have a system of subsets that are the independent sets. And uh, let me also... Uh, give a notation for the inclusion-wise maximal independent sets. So we will denote it by B. They, they will be the basis. So what are the axioms? Okay, the first two axioms is not a big surprise. Uh, in the third axiom, so the augmentation axiom, we demand that if there is an independent set which is not maximal, and there is another which is a maximal, then the maximal independent set can give a new element to the non-maximal in such a way that it will be, it will remain independent. So, 
yeah, yeah, the, the basis. So in this case, uh, talking about bigger and smaller independent sets, so the cardinality is usually a too rough measure here, and uh, so that's why this is the, uh, the the right axiom to take. And there is a last axiom, this sometimes called the minor axiom. Uh, it guarantees that we have, when we have an independent set, which is a subset of some x, then the set of independent sets extending this i and being a subset of x has always a maximal element. And uh, so in this axiomat one can prove all the basic properties about matrices that we have in a finite case. So it's here is no more true, no more necessarily true that if we have an infinite set and every finite subset of this infinite set is independent, then it's not necessarily true that the whole set is independent. But it is still true that if we have a de dependent set, then it contains an inclusion-wise minimal dependent set, which we call circuit. But these circuits, in this case, they can be now infinite, not just finite, as in the examples that I, I mentioned. OK, so what are the interesting problems in, in infinite matroid theory? There is one big central problem. It is the so-called uh, intersection conjecture. It says that uh, we have two matroids on the same ground set. And is it true? So, for example, here is, here is a set. We have two matroids there. And is it possible always to find a common independent set? such that there is a bipartition of the edge set in such a way that one piece here spans this side in the first matroid and this other side, other piece of this eye spans the other side uh, of the ground set of the matroid. So if we consider the matroid intersection theorem in the finite case, so the Edmonds theorem, then this is exactly the, the complementarity slackness conditions for that uh, minimax theorem. And yeah, so this is a, a central problem in the infinite matroid theory. There are several uh, partial results. The early one is due to Aharoni and Siv. They proved the case when both matroids are countable, one of them finitary, and the other one is the direct sum of countably many finite rank matroids. Bowler and Karmazin so, uh, showed that if one of the matroids is finitary and the other is a dual of a finitary, then they satisfy this. And yeah, so then later Karmazin et al. Uh, generalized this further to the so-called nearly finitary and nearly cofinitary matroids. But uh, I don't go into that now. Um, yeah, so the conjecture is remained actually open in the special case when both matroids are finitary and they are just countable. So surprisingly, this special case is, is, is still open. <laughs> okay, so let's go back to, the, to our problem. So uh, we had originally this uh, graph theoretical problem, and now we want to now we want to change it to some matroid problem. So we have a matroid family on a common edge set E, and if we have a family of subsets of E, some BI uh, family, such that BI is a base of the matroid MI, then we call it a cover, base covering if they together cover the whole edge set. We call it a base packing if these BI sets are pairwise disjoint. And we call it a partitioning if they, are, they form a partition of E. 
So in the graph, the theoretic question, the spanning trees are the bases if the graph is connected. And they now we have this more general settings. <laughs> we also define uh, covering and packing. It simply comes from the base covering uh, by demanding only independence and not being a base. And in the packing, we instead of demanding to be a base, we just demand to be in a spanning set. Um, the existence of a base covering, of course, is equivalent with the existence of a, of a covering, because if we have a covering, then we just um, extend them to, to bases in an arbitrary way. That, so it's, uh, it's the same. And so the big question is, uh, so the existence of a packing and the covering uh, imply uh, the existence of partitioning or not. So the, here, this is the uh, metroidal version of the question. And so our main result tells that if the metroid family contains only finitary and cofinitary metroids, so finitary metroid is a metroid in which all circuit is finite. In other words, if you have an infinite set such that every finite subset of the infinite set is independent, then necessarily your infinite set also independent. And cofinitary means that its dual is a finitary metroid. So if if the family contains only these two kind at most these two kind of metroids, then we managed finally to show that that this, that this implication holds. So covering and packing implies partitioning. It has an interesting uh, corollary. It says that uh, if we have two metroids on the common ground set and the first metroid has a base which is a subset of some base of the second metroid, and the second metroid has a base which is a subset of some base of the first metroid, then they actually have a common base as well. Uh, in, in, in the finite case, so if E, the S set is finite, then the theorem is uh, straightforward. Actually, every if you have a packing and covering, then every packing is automatically a covering and every covering is automatically a packing. So, Uh, it's a good question. Uh, so we have a third result. It says that assuming the continuum hypothesis, there is a counterexample for this uh, for this thing. So under the continuum hypothesis, or actually much weaker set theoretic assumption, is already enough. So we managed to construct some. Uh, some countable metroid such that if we take two copies of this metroid, then we have a metroid family that admits a packing and covering, but do not have a partitioning. So under some set theoretic assumption, there is a counterexample for origin for uh, for general metroids, but, but we do not know if if there is a counterexample already in in ZFC. Or this, or the statement is independent from ZFC. So we don't know that yet. Okay. So let me re restate here the main result and uh, talk about it a little bit, at least about the proof strategy. So uh, let's consider, for simplicity, the case when we have only finitary metroids and just finitely many. And the edge set is just countably infinite. It actually is not that big restriction in the sense that um, if we have an arbitrary big family, then it's not too hard to change it to a family consisting of three matroids such that if we can prove for that family the theorem, then it imply, implies for the original one. 
And yeah, reducing the an un uncountable e to a countable, it's a kind of elementary submodel type of argument, which is so not not it was not the main difficulty of the in the problem. <coughs> Okay, so the, in, in the proof, so we want to construct this partitioning, assuming that we have a covering and, and packing. And we construct it recursively. So in a general step, uh, in a general step, we keep some independent sets. So assume, for example, we have just three uh, matroids. And then in the general step, we have some, say, in step n, we have three sets such that they are independent in the corresponding matroids. So we have m0, m1, m2, say. And during the recursion, we grow these sets, and uh, so we want to do this in such a way that uh, for every edge, so in step n, n plus 1, so if here is some edge en, then in the next step, we want to uh, extend these independent sets in such a way that they cover already this sets i n. And furthermore, every independent set spans edge En in the corresponding matroids. So here are the conditions. Yes. So this I Ns are increasing in N for every fixed I. They are pairwise disjoint sets, independent in the corresponding matroids. And in every step, we want to extend in such a way that we cover a new edge in a fixed enumeration. And we also span this edge in every matroid with this, this independent set. OK, if we can do this, then this then we are done because we just take the union so we have a increasing sequence for every fixed i we have then an increasing sequence of, of independent sets so extend extension extension and we take the, the union and since we have finite array matroids a union of a chain of independent sets is, is independent and then these conditions will guarantee that we cover everything because edge E n is covered in step n, and we span everything in a matroid with the corresponding set. So if we manage to do this one step of the recursion, then then we are done. But this it was not. So why, why, how can we guarantee that this, the desired extension exists? So the detailed proof is relatively long. So uh, it's the largest part of our paper. But let me uh, give some some ideas about what what is the key tool to to attack this problem. So the key tool is tightness. So if we have a mat matroid family which admits a covering, so there is a family of independent sets which are which are so family of subsets of the common ground set E which are independent in the corresponding matroids and together cover the whole edge set. So we are, it admits a covering and every covering is automatically a packing which says that whenever I have a system of independent sets with this property, then all of these independent sets spans the whole edge set in the corresponding matroid. And we call an edge set tight 
with respect to a matroid family, if we take the matroid family consisting of the restriction of the matroids in the family to the to the edge set X, then this family is tight. Yeah, one can show that the tight sets are uh, closed under orbitary large union and intersection. This is one important part of the proof. But really what is more important is this lemma. So this gives a characterization that if uh, we can cover all the edges but one, and we cannot cover really all the edges, then what is the reason for that? And surprisingly, the only reason, so for example, so here we have i minus small i. Here is the extra edge i. And if capital E minus E admits a covering, but the whole edge set not, then the only reason for this that there is a tight subset of capital E minus E such that the set spans the edge E in every matroid. So why why is it a problem if we want a covering for the whole edge set? So if we if we want a covering for whole, the whole edge set, then so, for example, we have some Ri, I in K, which is a covering. Then we can take the Ri intersection X set, and this, this spans E in Mi because of the tightness. So these sets form a covering, covering for X. By the tightness of X, we know that they are they spanning the whole X in the corresponding matroid. And then by the assumption, X spans E in every matroid. So these sets, this set spans E in MI. But then I cannot be an element of any of the RI, RIs because it is an independent set and it's so it already spans E here with some circuit then there will be a circuit in it. Uh, okay, so this is this is uh, tightness. Uh, and from this, so basically the biggest difficulty when we want to proceed with these extensions is that we want to preserve the condition that we always have a covering and a packing which extends these independent sets. So if there is no, then we already, we already lost, obviously, because then we cannot. So we, we eventually want to get a partitioning which is a covering and a packing in the same time. So, uh, so in every step, we we are intended to preserve the property that there is some packing, there is some packing which extends the current system of the set. And we need to preserve also that there is a covering which extends these, these sets. And the main difficulty, so if I want to preserve just one of them, one of these conditions, then of course if there's, here I have some edge, I put this edge to I0 and I don't change any of the other independent sets, then the resulting system is still extendable to a packing because the same packing witnesses this. 
similarly, if I have a covering and I extend one of the independent sets by a new edge according to this covering, then I respect the covering extendability of my system. But the main difficulty was to preserve these two conditions simultaneously and in, in addition do something meaningful with the, with the new edges. Namely, namely, we need to cover all edges and we want to also span some given edge in every step. And for this, we uh, had to characterize the situation that a single edge extension ruins uh, one of the conditions. So, for example, after adding some extra edge to I0, it is no more true that I have an extension to, say, a covering. And from this lemma, we can conclude that so we obtain... So how, how do we do this? So we can say that we define an auxiliary matroid family in such a way that we replace... Um, so instead of MI, we consider the matroid that we obtain from MI by contracting II and deleting all the others, so all the ij's, j not equal to i. And then this extendability property means exactly that, so if, we ha if I have, I introduce these kind of auxiliary matroids, then uh, it is exactly a packing and covering with respect to, so a, a packing and covering extending to my system of independent sets is exactly a covering and packing with respect to these new matroids, which are defined exactly on E minus the union of the independent sets. So we need to characterize, so for example, if I put this new edge to I0, then I need to, and as it ruins the covering extendability, then the only reason that I have a covering for the original, but I do not have a covering in which edge E is covered in metroid 0. So we need to uh, we need to find a reason for that, and it is just the following. So we have a matroid family that admits a covering, and there is an edge, and we have some. So for every covering, the edge E cannot be covered in some specific matroid J. Then the only reason that there is a a tight set X, which does not contain E, but spans E in, in the matroid MJ. And so, this, this, in this characterization, one direction is easy again, because if, if, we, have, if we have a desired tight set, Then again, whatever, uh, the same picture also before here. So if I have, so the, so the restriction, so the intersection of the covering with this tight set covers the tight set, but then these pieces spanning, so they span the whole X, but X spans E in the matroid MJ. It means that this RJ intersection X already spans E, and E cannot be in RJ because RJ is independent. So the one direction is uh, is trivial. So that the if I can find such a tight set, then I cannot uh, have a covering in which E is in in RJ, and. Uh, yeah, the other direction is the application of the previous lemma. The previous lemma is, by the way, uh, based on 
So one tool in the proof is the so-called edmonds farkerson uh, algorithm. So the edmonds farkerson algorithm uh, gives you, so if you have some disjoint independent sets, say, I mean independent in the corresponding matrix. And so, say they form a partition of, of, of this, then, and you cannot cover this new extra element, then it, covers, it gives you some set, say x prime, or let, let it be y, uh, such that this this piece of this independent set, maybe I write J here, so J0, J1, J2. Uh, so these sets are spanning set of Y in the corresponding matroids. It's a simple aug augmenting path-like technique. And but in the infinite case, so in the finite case, finding such a thing already will guarantee that never cover E. But the infinite case is it's is more tricky. So if we assume that is not the set Y is not yet tied, then we can pick a covering of this Y zero, which shows that it is not tied. Pick, pick, pick this covering and then do apply again that uh, that's uh, Edmonds Parker type of augmenting paths technique. It is by the way exactly the, the technique that usually people use to prove the rank formula of the matroid sum. Okay, and so in this case, if it is not tight yet, then by taking, uh, covering, witnessing the non-tightness of this Y0 set, uh, we can we can use this augmenting path technique again, then we can, we get every step, we get a subset of the original, and by transfinite recursion, we, we will have some nested sequence of, of sets, and the, this process eventually stops and gives the desired tight set. So it, it is, is a way to tell uh, the proof. Okay, so few words about the, the relative consistency re result. So as I mentioned, if we assume the continuum hypothesis, then uh, we can create a counterexample for the theorem in, at least in general, matroids. And uh, yeah, the construction, so in finite case, what kind of uniform matroids do we have? So in finite case, it's, they are very simple. Uh, we take some, we have some edge sets with at least n elements, when n is a natural number, and the bases are exactly the n element subsets of that. That edge set. So in infinite case, so if E is an infinite set, then we have of course the same kind of guys, which I denote by U N E. But what are the duals of these guys? So first of all, what should be So in the dual, the bases are exactly those subsets of E, which avoiding exactly an element. element. Uh, but I should have started with the definition of uniform matroids to remind shortly. So a uh, matroid is uniform if for every base, for every base B, and every element of the base and element which is not in the base, so this element is outside, 
Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Thanks, thanks, thanks. So somebody not in the base. Um, then we have b minus e plus f is a base again. So a matroid is called uniform if it has this property. And so in an infinite set, what kind of matroids? What kind of uniform matrix do we have? So the bases can be the n element subsets for some fixed n, or they can be the subsets containing, not containing exact, so the, avoiding, so for which the complement is an n element subset. And do we have something else? So do we have only this kind of boring type of uniform matrix, or do we have something else? And the interesting answer that under some theoretic assumptions, so we don't know in ZFC, so without any ad additional set theoretic assumption, if there is anything else, but under some set theoretic assumption, one can construct, for example, a uniform matroid in an infinite uh, ground set, which is self-dual. Self-dual, it just means that for every base, the complement of the base is also a base. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, it was done by Newton Bowler and Stefan Geschke. Uh, they also showed, so there were, uh, it was known that uh, so there was a question if it is true for infinite matroids that for a fixed matroid any two bases of that matroid has the same size or not. And Higgs showed that under the generalized continuum hypothesis the answer is yes. But uh, Stefan and Nathan gave a construction for this self-dual infinite matroids in which the matroid uh, has bases with different sizes. So it's uh, interesting. So it is independent of ZFC if you have this, this nice property. And uh, so in, the, in this relative consistency proof, we basically used their technique to construct interesting non-trivial uniform matroids in, in, inf in the infinite case. Uh, okay. Um. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, maybe I tell the reduction of of the size of the the family. So, as I mentioned, without loss of generality. In the proof in our main results, we can assume that the family contains only, only three matroids. And it's a relatively short trick, so I, I can uh, show this. So we have a matroid family. And we want to construct another matroid family for which, so we want to construct some M dashed family such that, so this family consists only finitary and cofinitary matroids. We, we demand the same for m dashed, and we want the property that if the original has a covering, if and only if this new has a covering, and the same same holds for packings and partitionings as well, but m dashed has only three elements. Okay, so 
first of all, so this will be something like m0 prime, m1 prime, m2 prime. And the trick is that, so the ground sets, so the ground set here is E, then we take the ground set uh, E times K, yeah, exactly. And first build a copy of every matroid here. So we take a matroid which we obtain, so this is on this is on this set, and we just take it simply by copying the mi with the obvious bijection between e and e times i, and. Uh, so let's let f be the indexes of the finite array matroids. Mi is finite array. And we take the direct sum for first for finite array copies. And we extend, so this is, this will be a matroid just on the columns corresponding to the indexes which, which are cofinite, which are for finite array matroids. And we extend it, extend to the whole ground set by loops. So we declare loop any uh, any further element of the ground set. Similar way we can construct the direct sum of all the cofinite copies. So k minus f and extended by loops again. And then what should be the third one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this, this, exactly for this, this will be, so basically we have So here are the edges, and so remember what property we want. Property we want. We want that if the old old family has a covering, packing, or partitioning, if and only if this new family have a covering packing. Or so is it like you have exactly one element in each color? Well, you know. <laughs> uh huh. The the yeah, yeah, exactly. It will be, will be so, uh, yeah, and uh, so the, the last one is uh, will be simply the direct sum for the edges. Sorry. For every edge, oh yes, for every edge, we take the dual of the uh, E. 
three times. Yeah. Yeah. So what are the independent sets in this this matroid? This set a set is independent if for every row we so there is no row from which we contain everybody. So at least one guy is missing in every row. And okay, so we can check for example Suppose, for example, we have a covering in the original one. So let's check if it has the desired property. Uh, so if we have a covering in the original, then every edge, for every edge, so for example, Ri is a covering for And then we need to show that we have a covering for the uh, M dashed as well. And uh, so every edge is covered. It means that for every copy, so we, we take just the copies of this corresponding RIs uh, here. It means that every edge in every row, the edge is covered in some of the matroids. So there is some matroid, some index K, that, that edge is covered there. So these will be covered, and for all, all the remaining parts will be independent in, in this guy. So this is the, the this reduction step. Yeah, so the reduction to countable edge set is uh, involved. And yeah, I think that's all I wanted to tell.